All right, I want to provide you with a little bit of help on this lesson 1-3 homework assignment. So I've just gone through and selected, uh, well, several problems. And uh, again, just a word of caution, these homework help videos are intended to be just that. Uh, they should not be the end. If you're not sure of what to do with a particular problem, uh, you should always, if you watch how it's done in its entirety, you should always go back and make sure that you're able to do it on your own, um, especially uh, maybe two or three days after the assignment was given as you look at preparing for quizzes or tests. You should make sure you identify these problems that you struggled with and uh, there's a good chance that problems like this will show up on your quiz or your test. And if all you did was write down what I did, um, without fully understanding it and being able to do it on your own, then it's really uh, not doing you any good. So uh, please make sure that um, you're able to uh, do these problems on your own without any help. And I mentioned earlier a very good use of the video is to just watch a little bit of a problem and then um, just enough to get you going, give you some ideas, and then stop the video, pause it, and then see if you can take it the rest of the way on your own and then uh, go ahead and see what the answer is on the video. Um, that's a lot better use. That's going to help you a lot more than just copying down what I'm doing. Okay, so number 18. All right, we're supposed to find the directions are to use the number line to find the coordinate of the midpoint of this segment, EL. Okay, so EL E, of course, has a, is a coordinate of negative 6, and L has a coordinate 11. So the midpoint is found by taking those two numbers, negative 6 plus 11, and then dividing by 2. All right, so pretty simple. Uh, negative 6 plus 11 is 5. And then uh, if we were to... Uh, turn this into a fraction, it would be two and a half or decimal form, it would be 2.5. So the coordinate of the midpoint of that segment EL would be two and a half, 2.5. So probably uh, we would, we could plot it right here. This is three. So we, we don't, you don't have to plot it. I'm just giving you a visual here. It would be there on the number line. Okay, uh, number 22, this time we're trying to find the midpoint of two points that are on the coordinate plane. And so the formula is a little bit different. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and show you the formula again, just like we talked about in your notes. You're gonna add the two X coordinates that are given and then divide those by two. And then you're gonna do the same thing with the Y coordinates. And so that's the midpoint formula for points that fall on the coordinate plane. So let's take the two x coordinates, negative 2 plus 3 divided by 2, and then the two y coordinates, 5 plus negative 17 divided by 2, and then calculate, do the math here, and come up with actual numbers. Negative 2 plus 3 is 1 over 2, so the x coordinate of the midpoint is going to be 1 half. And then over here we have 5 plus negative 17, that's negative 12 divided by 2, and that is, of course, negative 6. So this represents the coordinate of the midpoint between V and Z. All right, very good. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Uh, we have another one of these. So. Uh, also on the coordinate plane, so uh, we'll just get some more practice with that formula. Take the two x coordinates, add them together, divide by 2. Take the two y coordinates, add them together, divide by 2. And then calculate each um, fraction. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1 over 2, so negative 1 half is the x coordinate. And then 2 plus negative 1 is positive 1 divided by 2, so positive 1 half is the y-coordinate. And so there's the midpoint for
for number 26. All right, 28, a uh, little different. Um, now we're not looking for the midpoint. Uh, we're actually given the midpoint and we want to know what, it, what this missing end point is. So in this particular case, the entire segment is called AC. So we're supposed to come up with the coordinates in number 28. Uh, we're supposed to come up with the coordinates for C. All right, but we're going to use the midpoint formula to help us and uh, use a little bit of algebra as well. So what we know is that if we take the points A and C and we follow that midpoint formula, we would take the two X coordinates. So the X coordinate for point A is one and the X coordinate for point C, I'm just going to write as X. And then that gets divided by two. We know the result of that because they're giving us the midpoint. We know the result of doing that should be negative three. That's the X coordinate of the midpoint. And then I'll do the same thing with, uh, to come up with the Y coordinate of C. I take the Y coordinate for A, add Y, which is currently unknown, divide by two, I should come up with the Y coordinate of the midpoint. And now the algebra is we want to undo, if you do PEMDAS in reverse, you undo division before you undo operations in parentheses. And technically, there's a set of parentheses here in the numerator. So we want to undo the division first, and we undo division with multiplication. So I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by 2. And that leaves me with 1 plus x equals negative 6. And when I subtract 1 from both sides, I get an x coordinate of negative 7. And then uh, same process over here, multiplied by 2 on both sides. And that's going to cancel these. So that leaves me with 7 plus y equals 2. And subtracting 7 from both sides, I get a y coordinate of negative 5. And so that ends up being my solution, my answer, uh, the midpoint or the end point C has the coordinates negative seven, negative five. Very good. Uh, let's try another one that's similar. Uh, this time we want to find point A. So. Remember, the whole segment is called AC, so in this case, A is missing. B is the midpoint. And C is the other end point. So using that same thought process, I'll add the two X's together. So here's the X coordinate for A adding to the x coordinate for c, dividing by 2, and that should give me the x coordinate of the midpoint, which is 8 thirds. And then uh, the same thing for the y coordinate, y coordinate of a plus the y coordinate of c, divided by 2, should give me the y coordinate of the midpoint. Okay, well, just like we did in the previous problem, we're going to multiply by 2 on both sides as a first step. Okay, and uh, I'll just come up here and keep working. Uh, so when I multiply both sides by 2, I get x plus 5 thirds is equal to 16 thirds. 8 thirds times 2, 8 times 2 divided by 3. And then uh, I subtract 5 thirds from both sides and I get 11 thirds. All right, and now to get the y coordinate of this endpoint A, uh, same thing, I multiply both sides by 2. And that's going to turn this into y plus negative 6 is equal to 8. 4 times 2, and then I add 6 to both sides, and I get a y-coordinate of 14. 
Now, of course, you could have used the decimal form of this. That's fine. So my final answer for the coordinates of the endpoint called A, uh, X coordinate is 11 thirds and the Y coordinate is 14. That is your answer for number 32. Okay, so uh, we're now into the block of problems starting with number 34. Actually, this is number 34. And so we're told here that M is the midpoint of a segment called FG. So we're supposed to find each missing measure. So 34 wants us to find the measurement of the segment FG, the entire segment. All right, so uh, just a little picture here. Um, we could just not saying this is required, but I know some people like to see uh, visuals. So if this is F and this is M and this is G, FM is 5Y plus 13, MG is 5 minus 3Y, then what is the measurement of this entire segment? Well, the thing about midpoint is by definition it should be it, it should break this entire segment FG up into two equal parts okay so this measurement in number form should be exactly the same as this one so since that's true I can let this expression 5y plus 13 equal the mg measurement expressed in, it being expressed as 5y minus 3y. And then I just solve for y, and when I solve for y, that's going to make it pretty easy to find out what the whole length actually is as a number measurement. Okay, so I'm going to add 3y to both sides. And I get 8y plus 13 is equal to 5. And then I subtract 13 from both sides, getting far down on the board, so I'll come over here. If I subtract 13 from both sides, I get 8y is equal to negative 8. So y is equal to negative 1. Okay, now that's not my answer, because my, my answer should be the length of this entire segment. But if I replace, uh, it really doesn't matter which one, uh, let's just say you replace y here with negative one and you simplify this this is negative 5 plus 13 which is 8 and uh, so 8 times 2 because remember these two segments since M is the midpoint these two segments are the same so it's really going to be 8 times 2 which gives us the entire length of 16 for segment FG all right, so that is your answer for number 34. All right, we'll jump down to number 40. And uh, this is one of those where you had to do a fractional distance. So the question is, what is the point called X on this number line? AE is the segment that we're working with. So it starts here at negative 7, stops at 2. So let's find out what that distance is. The AE distance is the absolute value of negative 7 minus 2, which is the absolute value of negative 9, which is positive 9. Okay, that's the distance. And now we want to know what point would be 1 sixth of that distance from A to E. So we need to multiply this result 9 times 1 sixth. And of course, that's 9, 6, but in reduced form, that's 3 over 2, which is another way of saying 1 and a half. So what we're going to need to do to actually find x is start at a and move this far toward e. And where we land will be the coordinates of point x. Okay, so if you were at negative 7 and you went 
on the number line one and a half units to the right, which is another way of saying adding one and a half, you would be at negative five and a half. And so that's where X should be. That is going to be the coordinates or the coordinate, since it's on the number line, the coordinate of point X. Okay. Now we uh, come to the last two, and uh, here's another fractional distance, but it involves the coordinate plane, which is a little bit more involved, very similar to what we just did on the number line. It's just that we need to find the distance for both the X coordinates and the Y coordinates. Instead of just having one coordinate like we had on the number line, we've got X, Y that we had to find distances for. So let's just uh, start by finding the distance of the X coordinates of, from A to B. So that's going to be the absolute value of negative 5 minus 2, which is the absolute value of negative 7, which of course is positive 7. And then for the Y coordinates, the absolute value of negative 5 minus 9, which is the absolute value of negative 14, which of course is positive 14. Okay, now much like we did before on our number line example, we need to multiply both of these distances by one-fifth. Okay, 7 times one-fifth, of course, is seven-fifths. 14 times 1 fifth, 14 fifths. Okay, so these become the numbers. Uh, remember, we're going from A to B. So we're actually going to the, if you think about it in two directions, remember the XY plane, X coordinate runs horizontally, Y coordinate runs vertically. To go from A to B, it's a diagonal move, but if you put the two moves together, we're moving to the right according to the x-axis, and we're moving up according to the y. So both of these numbers are going to be added. This is going to be added to the x-coordinate of A, and this number is going to be added to the y-coordinate of A. And when we do those two additions, the result will represent that point that is one-fifth of the distance. Okay, so starting at A, the x-coordinate of A, of course, is negative 5. So is the y. So we do negative 5 plus 7 fifths. I just like to work with fractions, so I'm going to change negative 5 into negative 25 fifths plus 7 fifths. And that gives uh, negative 18 fifths. And then uh, you can change this into a uh, decimal if you like. Um, I think the book actually gives a decimal answer. So if you go to your calculator and you do negative 18 divided by 5, you'll get uh, negative 3.6. All right, so that's going to be the x-coordinate of the point on this segment that is one-fifth of the distance from A to B. All right, that'll be the x, and now let's calculate the y. So it also has a coordinate negative 5 for the y, but this time we're going to add 14 fifths. All right, so negative 25 fifths. I'm not saying you have to do it exactly like this, but you just need to understand the process the way you come up at this point, the math, the arithmetic that you use to come up with the final points, uh, you can do whatever feels comfortable. I know some people are a little bit weak in fractions, so I like to review fraction work as much as possible when we can. All right, so negative 25 plus 14 is negative 11. And so uh, when you do this in your calculator, negative 11, divided by 5, that would be negative 2.2. .2. Okay, and so that's going to be our final answer. That point called X, which is on the segment one-fifth of the distance from A to B, it would have this XY coordinates. Right. 
And if, let's just go ahead and plot that. So that's negative two, negative four. So this would be negative three and just a little bit further. And then negative 2.2. .2. These are in twos. So it's going to be somewhere down in here. So that should, um, it's always good if you're taking a quiz or a test and you have a problem like this. Uh, it might be good to go ahead and plot that point just to see if your answer is reasonable. You, you may come up with something as an answer that doesn't even fall on the segment. And so you'll know that you did something incorrectly. Okay, uh, I think we got one more. Um, one of these ratio problems. Let's find that point called X on this segment called JK such that the ratio of JX to XK is 1 to 2. So another way of saying this in words, um, XK should be double. 1 to 2 means that uh, JX is, you could look at it one of two ways. It's half the size of XK or XK is two times the size of JX. Okay, so algebraically we could say that XK, just writing a little equation, XK should be double whatever JX is. Okay, now let's think about algebraically. Let's just randomly put, for now, I'm just going to put X on here just, just so we can have something to look at. So the segment JX plus the segment XK should equal the entire segment JK. Well, this little equation that we came up with, which is another way of representing the ratio, this is just another way of putting this ratio into equation form for this particular problem. Well, now we can do what is known as substitution, which is very handy because these two are the same. XK equals means is. XK is 2JX, so down here, to make this easier to solve, we're actually going to re replace XK with 2JX. And now the nice thing about that is now these are like terms that can be combined. 1 plus 2 is 3JX. And now I'm going to solve for JX by multiplying by a third. Remember, um, multiplying a number by its inverse always gives us one. That's the same thing as dividing by three, but instead of having JK over three, I like this form better. Okay, because ultimately that's really what we're trying to find. It, or, or if we knew the if we knew the distance called jx, then that would make it easy to find out uh, what that actually is. What what is that point called x? What are the coordinates? So uh, this is going to help us find that. Now we've we've got an equation set up to help us find out what that segment jx. Uh, is okay so now let's find out what the distance is let's find out what this total distance is sort of like we did in the previous problem let's find the difference between the x coordinates all right so the difference between the x coordinates would be the absolute value of negative one minus five Negative 1 minus 5, and that's the absolute value of negative 6, which is 6. And then for the y coordinates, the absolute value of 4 minus negative 3, the absolute value of 7, which is 7. Okay, so that is jk. All right, so going back up to my equation, to get jx, I need to do one third of the distance of jk, which means I need to multiply both of these numbers by a third.
Okay, and so notice it says um, the ratio of find X on JK, okay? And so we've got this ratio. Now we're ready, it's almost like we need to move from J a certain number of places and direction to get to X, okay? Well, you gotta think here a little bit because the move now, if we go horizontally, we're going to the right. And that's what the X axis is all about. It's always right, left. So we're going to the right, but according to the Y axis, we're going down, okay? So this number two is gonna be added to X, the J coordinate, we're gonna to add to X but the number that we came up with for y is going to be subtracted because down is another way of saying subtract so you got to be careful you got to notice um, how did we travel uh, left right up down and uh, that will tell you what operation to use uh, either addition or subtraction okay so uh, going back to j <clears throat> x the coordinate for x will be i'm going to take two and add it to negative one okay that's the existing x coordinate so negative one plus two is one and then for the y coordinate which is four i'm going to subtract seven thirds all right so let's just do a little a little math here, four minus seven thirds. And we can change four into thirds, that's 12 thirds. And that's gonna be five thirds. All right, and I'm fine with you leaving it um, as, as this, or if you go to your calculator and change it to decimal, that's fine. Or if you made it one and two thirds, that would be okay too. But that is your answer. That's the uh, coordinate for X. And then again, I think uh, the principle of reasonableness, if you had time, if you saw this on a quiz or test, you should plot that point and see if it does look reasonable. Uh, I just threw that out there as an example, but if we did plot one, one and two thirds, Does it look uh, reasonable that this segment, XK, is double the size of this segment called JX? And I think it does. All right, so um, we're all done with this homework up video. I hope that does help. But if there's something on here you're still not quite understanding or you're not able to do these successfully on your own, uh, just let me know and I'll see you next time.